Guys, how's it going? It's Will from Will's Fifth Quarter Special here with this Facebook Live on March 15th. A Sunday afternoon that's nice and sunny, but on some sad circumstances right now as we are all dealing with what is known as COVID-19. The novel coronavirus that is now in the United States. It's a very scary time for Americans and a lot of sports fans as well, so... That's why we're bringing you this special Facebook Live while everyone's waiting for sports to continue. Baseball was going on spring training. The NBA was just finishing its season. March Madness was supposed to be starting pretty soon here this week, but uh, all those things have ended. Um, we Just to kind of give you guys an update, those of you that haven't heard about it, the NBA suspended its games for the season uh, until things cool down. You know, The virus simmers down and everyone's safe and healthy again. Then they're going to continue the season and the playoffs and such. Uh, baseball it, it didn't even finish its spring training yet, and they are already suspending things. Uh, just in Chicago as well, Governor J.B. Pritzker doesn't want to take anything. Uh, he wants to not have us take chances, and is strategically and smartly as the governor making sure both all Chicago sports teams, especially the Sox and Cubs, do not start play again until may so that'll be definitely interesting we're used to baseball starting in april over the years and then it used to always be in now march last few years so it's it's definitely interesting i think you don't want to play games with this COVID 19 you know we're, we're already seeing what's happening in italy um with the sports world there they had a soccer player get infected uh a few nba players now uh we just heard about the minor league baseball player from the yankees so just stay safe out there, guys. That's the first thing I'm going to start with this Facebook Live. We're going to get into some other things. And I just want you guys to know we're, we're all about the fans here, the average sports fans, all of you guys that are part of the Will's Fifth Quarter Special Family, uh, the guest appearances we've had, the co-hosts we've had. And I just want all of you to make sure you're being safe. So on behalf of myself and Will's Fifth Quarter Special, we want to make sure you guys are staying safe, washing your hands, and just taking good precautions through this COVID-19 uh, situation in our history and Will's fifth quarter special is going to be right here with you every step of the way just because a lot of the sports aren't going on right now this COVID-19 is not going to stop the show when the buzzer sounds at the end of the sports game we bring you the fifth quarter sports talk Will's fifth quarter special will continue on COVID-19 will not stop Will's fifth quarter special and what we want to bring to each of you. We're going to have a lot of content coming out this week as well, guys. Some more blog posts coming up, keeping you posted on things. We're going to talk about the Chicago Bears. They made an offseason signing this past weekend. And we're going to talk about what we think could happen with baseball uh, a little bit. we got a little Redbird update coming up. We're going to have some U of I content as well on some episodes. I'm going to give you guys some details on that. We're going to have a lot of things coming up. So we're going to start with the Chicago Bears. They brought back one of their defensive stars that was originally, his last contract with the team was a four-year, $28 million deal. This is when the Bears were starting the resurgence, trying to find the right pieces together to what got them to that 12-4 and record uh, not too long ago. And then the rough season they had last year as well with injuries, uh, just the offense not clicking, play calling. They have re-signed line, inside linebacker Danny Trevathan to a three-year, $21 million deal. So that that's a big step for the Bears. I think it's a really good move because the question has been in Chicago for the last few weeks, month or so, since the season ended even, which linebacker of the two will the Bears choose from? They would have to choose Nick Kiewikowski, who was a backup at the time, but when Trevathan was hurt, he really kind of stepped into his own, really brought strong defensive play to the table for the Chicago Bears, making a case where it was during his contract year he could easily go get paid this off season, you know, elsewhere. You know, rumors are circulating. It might be the Giants, could be the Packers. Ryan Rodgers is apparently trying to get him in there uh, to get another former pair to the Packers. Uh, so we'll see. But I think it's a great move bringing back Danny Trevathan. You know, it's all about bringing in good veterans, a good presence, and he's a key leader for a lot of those young players. We have Eddie Jackson still. We have Khalil Mack, a lot of young players, Roquan Smith, Leonard Floyd, a lot of names on that roster especially in the secondary, but at the linebacker position. You know, and they're going to draft some young kids. And you want to have 
veterans that can really help mold those players. It's not just the coach's job, especially in the National Football League and in football. It's all about playing around the veterans as well. And I think Andrew Athens a really good presence for this Bears uh, locker room as well. You know, they talk about trying to build a good locker room presence. You know, Ryan Pace has talked a lot about that. Matt Nagy, back when, you know, he first came to the team, noticed that a lot. That's what a lot of players have come to the Bears for as well. And Robinson, and Taylor Gabriel when he was originally with the Bears, all kinds of players, guys. You know, it, this is a great locker room. Yeah, they didn't win last year like we hoped, but – Sky's the limit, you know. They got to get some offensive line players, and I think that's the thing with this free agency now, with COVID nineteen going on, it's going to really be delayed. Uh, and we just had a quarterback deal apparently go down not too long ago here, a second ago when we started this video. Ryan Tannehill just took a four year deal, hundred eighty million dollars to the Titans, so he got paid just now for playing great last year. We'll see what he does over there. But a lot of Bears fans, you know, are now talking about Derek Carr maybe in a trade. I think. You should go the Andy Dalton route or a different quarterback, you know, because you're not going to have a lot of money and you need – well, you're going to have at least – I project after this contract, Dan Trace, about $20, 25000000 million, give or take 20 to $30 million, which is good to work with, but players cost money. You know, players you draft, you're going to have to pay them as well. You know, maybe re-signing a player or two you want to extend, the stuff like that. Fifth-year option to Mitch. You know, there's a lot of intangibles that come into play, and it's important that they really shore up this O-line. You know, whether you don't want Mitch to be your starter or not, uh, you go for another quarterback. The only way that quarterback's going to flourish in your system is a good O-line. You know, the run game developing more. You know, I think people are talking about it, and a lot, I'm a fan of Tariq Cohen. I think he's a good young player for this Bears team. He's done a lot for Chicago with the Bears, but you can get a good running back anywhere in the draft. You know, we've seen that in the last few years. So I think the Bears would be smart. I think the Bears would be smart if they traded Tariq Cohen, and I think you can get some good value for him. You know, Ryan Pace is all about the draft and getting draft picks, so he could get some really good draft picks for that. And uh, it's important that the Bears just continue to, you know, develop strategically and smartly. You know, it's really important, and I think they're on the right foot. There's a running back I really like. Uh, he's from my alma mater at Illinois State University. I've been talking about it for a long time, but he th- he fits Matt Nagy's style of offense. And I think you put him with a guy like David Montgomery, you can get him in the draft or undraft or wherever he goes. Uh, James Robinson would be a really good player, not just in the National Football League, but for the Chicago Bears. You know, the Bears are very um, dependent on the run to somewhat. They have really good passing game. Uh, they're trying to show up their tight end position, but I think – Adding him in the run game is going to be very important. You know, it's all about good youth, the presence, the energy. And he's got really good speed. He's a real good blocker. Gets in between the tackles real well, just like David Montgomery. So you could have a nice one-two punch. Montgomery getting the bulk of your plays, but then you have James Robinson there for support, third downs, goal lines, whatever you need him to do. Uh, He's a really good player at that. He could be a really another good piece with this Bears offense. And... A lot of people think about the quarterback and they're saying, oh, Mitch Trubisky's not going to be up to snuff. I think this team could do that. But like I said, the O-line is going to be key. And we're, we're going to see O-line players get paid. You know, We just saw it earlier today as well. Anthony Costanza got a nice contract with the Colts. Colts got some money. They're spending it. They're keeping their players they like. But that's going to be kind of a building block, I want to say, or a gauge with contracts. Because a lot of players, when they want to sign – you know, a deal and get paid, they'll look at how maybe another play in that position got signed. You know, we've seen it the last few years with quarterbacks and uh, wide receivers, all types of players. And th- it's going to be a good free agent class. So a lot of people are a little skeptical about this. I think Marcus Mariota is still a decent name to look at. Yes, he has not completely proven himself in Tennessee, obviously, because he's going to be a free agent, probably leaving the Titans. And they just gave Tannehill a big deal for four years. So that kind of spells out the end of the Marcus Mariota era in Tennessee. I think they're going to probably draft a young kid to develop under Tannehill, the way Tannehill's playing now in that system. I think that'd be a good idea if I were the Titans. A good young team over there in Tennessee. But I think Mariota would be a good piece for the Bears. You know, Ryan Pace wanted to draft him previously. He's a good kid, uh, a good young quarterback still in this league. He's not that old, still right in his prime. And he needs to change the scenery. A lot of players that get a change of scenery, we've seen it in any sport, baseball, football, basketball. Uh, a good change of scenery can really help their uh, resurgence, I would say, is the right word. You know, 
I think Mariota could really teach Mitch some things. Like, Mitch has failed a little bit this past year. Mariota's done that more than once. So it could really teach him, hey, you, you get another veteran or two, you know, with Mariota. You get a veteran in Mariota to go with Mitch. You can get, you know, another free agent out there. And you don't want to spend the money on Teddy Bridgewater. I know a lot of people think he's a great quarterback. He is, but he is real injury prone. You know, so is Mariota, but I think... In the Bears' money situation, I think it would be a really good idea to not trade the picks for a quarterback like a Derek Carr or an Andy Dalton. Go in free agency. You know, you, you probably won't get a Phillip Rivers that easily unless you officially promise him a starting role, and that's probably what the Bears aren't going to do at this point. You know, they want to bring competition for Mitch, see if he still can handle the pressure and the situation as a whole. And I think you want to draft a quarterback as well. I think that would be a really good idea if you're the Chicago Bears. You're going to have two second-round picks and a bunch of other picks throughout the draft, uh, two seventh-round picks, two fifth-round picks, fourth-round pick, compensatory now. Uh, they lost their third-round pick in that deal with, for Khalil Mack you know, with the Las Vegas Raiders, who also have the Bears' first-round pick, but then in the second round. But anyways, a lot of things are going to be coming up for the Bears. It's not going to be for a little while just because they haven't officially said they're going to pause New League year or push it back because of the COVID-19 situation. So we're going to get you more informed about the Chicago Bears as things before. But Daniel Trevation, good move. Uh, three years, $20 million. Hopefully some more O-line players, both the draft and uh, free agency, some depth for that O-line, uh, maybe another receiver or two. We'll see what happens. So we at Will Smith Corps Special will keep you filled in on all things Chicago Bears during the offseason as things move forward. Now we're going to get into baseball a little bit. And you know a lot of people are saying, hey, why do you want to talk about baseball when there's nothing going on, spring training was just paused? But there's something interesting. It, it, it's related to a division rival of the Chicago Cubs. So Trevor Bauer, uh, he played, used to play at the Indians. He's with the Reds after a trade deadline deal that sent him over there yes, last year in a three-team trade, sending Fran Mil Reyes to the Indians. But long story short, he is bringing together a lot of major league and minor league players. Reached out to him on Twitter said, hey, guys, I know we're paused. You know, They said we could stay. According to the regulations of Major League Baseball, agreed upon with Rob Manfred and all the owners, you could stay at the team spring training. You could uh, stay where you stay for spring training in Arizona or, or go home. You know, just to be safe, we don't want you guys getting sick or testing positive for COVID-19. And I thought it was amazing that he's trying to bring all these players together, not just from like the players he's working out with in the Reds, but all these players from other teams together as one group. And uh, they're going to do a Sandlot game. And I think that's pretty cool. I think it still keeps a lot of players in shape. I think it's a good idea. But you want to be safe with COVID-19 out there. You want to be careful, not too big of a gathering for that game. I, but I think Trevor Bauer, hats off to him. I think that's a really good way to approach what's going on with this pause in baseball. And they talked about with the White Sox. Rick Hahn was uh, at the podium not too long ago, a few days ago or so. And Chuck Garfine of the White Sox Talk podcast was talking about it. A lot of the Chicago media that covers the White Sox were talking about, hey, Rick Hahn is not going to let this stop the White Sox energy from, you know, whenever the season starts. Give it May as Pritzker, as uh, said, Sox and Cubs baseball will start at home, stuff like that. We'll see, you know, as it unfolds right now. You know, it's kind of a day-at-a-time approach with this COVID-19. We're all learning as people how to handle it, how to prevent getting sick. But in terms of baseball, he's united the team together. You know, he's quoted saying, we will get through this. And the team still has a lot of energy. Great offseason. You can't lose that energy. You know, they always talk about it when something happens, you know, that's devastating or um, something big happens to a team all of a sudden, you know, when they're getting ready to play or whether they're in season, it could really affect a team's morale given, the, you know, the young players, the coaching staff as a whole, the clubhouse. It could really affect all those intangibles. So I think if you're the White Sox, you want to keep that energy going. You want to really – Keep working out when you can. You know, beat in the. You know, some you can work out at home inside. You don't have to go to a gym. You don't have to, you know, do something like that. You can just do it right at home. You know, safe with your family, staying healthy, do the little things like that over time, and it will. Uh, when baseball comes back around and starts up again, they'll be all ready to go, and we'll. Uh, I'll be excited to see White Sox baseball. So, uh, Sox fans, we're gonna have to wait and uh, prepare. You know, for just staying safe right now. You know, we we're, it's all about keeping the players safe. I think Major League Baseball, the NBA, credit to all the sports organizations right now are doing a great job with, you know, letting fans know, hey, we appreciate your support. Keep supporting us through this. We're we're just it's not the safety of the players. We're about the fans as well, and I think that's a really good thing. So uh, now we're gonna head over to Cubs baseball, and uh, they're on pause as well. 
Like I said about the White Sox, Pritzker is not going to let baseball start again until May, probably, possibly mid or late April. Depends what's going on with COVID-19 over here in America. So the Cubs are had a pretty good spring as well. You know, uh, Nico Horner looks pretty good. Javi Baez, of course, all the usual Cubs that a lot of people like to talk about, Schwarber, KB. And the pitching is going to be interesting. I think the bullpen is something a lot of Cub fans were worried about, and uh, especially David Ross. You know, a lot of people think David Ross is – a great personality, did a lot with the team when the Cubs won it all in 16 when he was there and such. You know, really brought character to some of these veterans now that were young players at the time. Really helped them out a few years back. And I think he can be a good manager. The question will be how he handles situations. And that divide of coach and player is going to be really important, you know, between the manager and its players. You know, you want to have fun, yes, and buddy-buddy, but you want to – Take care of business. You know, respect that chain of command that David Ross is now in as the manager for the Chicago Cubs. You know, because he played with guys like Javi Baez, Chris Bryant, and all these guys. And there's going to be a feeling of, hey, you know, I played with you, we're friends. You know, let's approach it this way. But you have to approach it as appropriate with a manager and the players. So I think that's going to be really key. Uh, so we're going to keep you updated on all things Sox and Cubs baseball as things move forward. Uh, through the COVID-19 virus situations right now. When it comes back in May, we're going to have a lot of baseball coverage to come. And we also want to give a shout-out to a local Chicago reporter that just got an additional role doing radio for ESPN 1000. He's going to be on Cap and Company, all that stuff, during uh, White Sox baseball time to talk during the MLB season about White Sox baseball. So we want to give a congratulations from us at Wilco Score Special to Homewood Flossmore native, one of the best sports reporters that covers the Chicago White Sox, Chuck Garfin. So congratulations to Chuck from us here at Willis Fifth Quarter Special. Now we're going to head to the NCAA stuff. So there's reports out. These came out earlier this week. Uh, as things unfolded, a new one came out each day. The March Madness tournament for the, probably one of the first times in the history of March Madness in college basketball is canceled. So men's basketball side, women's basketball side, all canceled due to the COVID-19 virus outbreak as well. The softball and baseball teams in college will not be playing in the spring as well due to the COVID-19 outbreak. So that was officially canceled. And it's, it's you know, if you're the Redbirds, we're going to go into Illinois State a little bit here. There's going to be an episode coming up called the Redbird Sports Update. Another one, like we always do, as I've told you, every other episode will be where we keep everyone posted on things Illinois State Athletics. One of the things we started this show with in that collegiate segment, so we're going to keep that going moving forward with Will Smith Quarter Special. And we're also going to have a special episode with a friend of the show. He was on episode two when we talked about this team, the University of Illinois fighting Illini men's basketball team. So we're going to do a lot of recaps for college basketball. Doesn't matter, Just because, you know, they're ended, it's canceled, it doesn't mean we can't talk about it still a little bit. So we're going to have some episodes coming out about that. Tomorrow, actually, I'm going to interview the new sports director at WZND this year. And uh, we're going to talk to him, recapping men's and women's basketball for Illinois State this year. And just kind of the effect COVID-19 is having on their athletics, their Missouri Valley Conference, and what it means moving forward. You know, the future of it, you know, how it's going to affect things and fans and such. And we're going to do one about U of I, who I think had a really good season, you know. I mean, I kind of had them on my future bracket here in a week or so before things ended with COVID-19's outbreak here that U of I could really make a good run. You know, it's a really good team, a good coach with experience in Brad Underwood that has a really good core of players. U of I has that type of energy seeing games this year where they fight through situations, you know, the Maryland's and all the teams in the Big Ten. They play them hard which I think is really good. I like that a lot about Underwood's style. Good defense, good rebounding, nice shooting and passing. That's good fundamental, simple style, especially in any level of basketball, but I think especially at collegiate basketball. That's what you want to do with these collegiate players. You know, gives them ready for the pros when they get a chance in the future, whatever grade level they're at, wherever they go, and I think that's important. So we're going to have some U of I talk coming up. Probably playing some DePaul basketball not too far from us here over there in Chicago. We can talk a little bit about that. There's going to be a lot of different things coming up with Will Fifth Quarter Special in the next few weeks. Like I said, COVID-19 will not stop this show from going. And we have some friendly faces that have joined us. Uh, Julie Martin, former co-worker of mine over at WZND. She covers uh, TV for a affiliate in 
the one of the Dakotas. So we want to wish you Julie safety over there in the Dakotas. Keep up the good work. Brett Simmons, an old teacher of mine at Illinois State. Good to see you. My One of my relatives, George Rumba's on, and my old coworker Tommy. So thanks for joining us, guys. And we're going to keep you guys posted with everything moving forward. You know, what happens with COVID-19, you know, baseball, football, uh, the Bulls as well. Uh, their season was suspended, so kind of sad seeing Kobe White get a start or two first, finally. And, you know, COVID-19 happens. So as I started this Facebook Live with, you know, with COVID-19, you want to stay home if you're not feeling well. You want to be careful. Wash your hands. Don't go to the big gatherings. I mean, I know it's around St. Patrick's Day. You want to have fun, but you want to worry about your health first, guys. You know, be home with your families, Netflix, listen to Will's Fifth Quarter Special episodes from the past to now, read some of the blog posts we have on willsfifthquarterspecial.com. I'm going to try and put up some fun stuff for you guys this week to enjoy some polls and, you know, little videos or whatever. So we're going to keep you guys with us through this you know we're all going to get through this together and that's what we're going to do here at willis with court special our family that you guys are a part of here we're going to help you guys through this because i i'm i'm you know with COVID 19 we got we have to worry about our safety as uh the human race and people around the world are going through some tough stuff so our prayers to them and you know those that are affected but just try and stay healthy wash your hands a lot hand sanitizer, eat healthy food as well. Just be there with your families, you know, take care of yourself. And in a month or two, we will be able to talk a lot more sports finally. And we can know that when we talk to our future children, children's children, you know, in the future, whatever, we could talk about how we survived this together. We survived COVID-19 together. So that's all the time we have on this Facebook Live of Will's Fifth Quarter Special. Uh, tune in next time and uh, enjoy some of our content from the fifth quarter sports talks that's going to be coming out this week. Keep tabs on the blog posts, guys. We're going to have uh, some new blog posts coming out about what's going on with COVID nineteen. You know, like I said, it's affecting Major League Baseball, the National Football League, the NBA, and uh, collegiate sports as well. So thanks for your time, everybody. Uh, hope everyone enjoys the rest of their weekend. You know, go play some board games. You know, Netflix. Disney Plus, whatever you guys want to need to do. Watch some old sports games that you like, sports movies, uh, like the ones we talk about in our movie moments here. I'm going to be enjoying putting out some more content for you guys as usual, and I hope everyone stays safe and healthy. We're going to get through COVID-19 together, guys. And as I said, COVID-19 will not prevent Will's fifth quarter special from bringing good content for the average sports fan. I hope you guys have a great Sunday afternoon, the rest of your day. Thanks for tuning in to this Facebook Live of Will's fifth quarter special. Thank you.